Okie dokie. Um, okay, well, thank you for the opportunity to share a few things that happen um, at Aquinas College. Um, I just thought I would throw this slide up as a reminder of um, the link between nature of science and science capabilities. So the, the New Zealand curriculum says that through the nature of science, our students are going to learn what science is and develop the skills, attitudes and values to build an understanding of the world. So um, for me and for our school, I guess, the, the capabilities really are just a tool for teaching um, the aims of nature of science. Um, I've put a link there that I'm not going to follow, but people can at some stage, just to take you to a page where it does explain how the capabilities relate, because it's something that some people, for some reason, don't always understand. Okay, so um, Aquinas College is a year 7 to 13 um, Catholic integrated high school in Tauranga, and a few years ago the faculty made a decision with our years 9 and 10 to contextualise our science programme. So as it says on the screen there, we, we have one context per term and we take achievement um, outcomes from more than one contextual strand as well as nature of science. Um, you can read the screen, as you don't need me to read it to, but if I explain that at Aquinas College we have a junior certificate called REACH, is reaching excellence at Aquinas College. Um, all of the core curriculum subjects contribute credits to that um, certificate. And within the science um, program, we have three assessments that contribute equally um, to those REACH credits. And what we try to do is, what, what we've recognised is that um, our students have different learning styles and they have different strengths. We try to provide a variety of classroom experiences um, that meet the needs of all our students. Um, we scaffold our assessment tasks so that they are not something completely out of the blue. Our students will have had experience of them and some uh, support in achieving the aims of the assessments. Um, and we provide a variety so that of, uh, of tasks so our students can demonstrate their, what they can do um, and we can also identify areas that we need to develop. Um, and this also links to our reporting, um, which is something we're still working on, but um, we try to report on what our students can do and give some feed forward as to areas that they need to work on. Okay, so that's sort of the background of our program. So I'm just going to give you a few examples. Um, in one context for our year 10s is birds and the bees. So this particular term looks at both plant and human reproduction. Um, in the plant side of it, um, we look at both asexual and sexual reproduction. Our students grow um, plants from tubers, from bulbs, from seeds and from cuttings. Uh, in our glasshouse, and they carry out, um, well, they do activities around flowers, seed structure, and, and so on. So this activity that I've shown you part of um, is one where we have both group and individual works. So as you can see there, um, our, in groups of around three, the students design an experiment, um, and then they collect the data over several um, days as a group. Um, so we give them one period to plan and to write up a method and then they collect the data. Um, once the data has been collected, we use another class period where the individuals then have to um, write a conclusion to the experiment. They have to discuss the validity of their method um, and then we ask them to think about how the method could be improved. So what I've put in the brackets are just the um, capabilities and nature of science um, links to those particular tasks. So that's one activity. Within the same uh, context, this is the second activity for REACH. 
Um, so this one is around birth notices um, and birth weights of New Zealand children. We give them about a month to collect the information. Um, they have to put it on a histogram and then compare it to a normal bell curve, which we provide for them. Um, and then we ask them to think about um, looking at their graph, comparing it to the bell curve, giving some interpretation to their graph and some inferences around why their graph might be different. So we're looking for things like uh, small sample size, um, the, the effect or the influence of technology in, um, in having babies survive that are at very small weights that we might not have got in the past and so on. Um, and then the question at the bottom describes some reasons why not all babies are born at the same weight. So thinking about um, the health of the mother, the kind of diet she has, and um, external environmental impacts. So those are two um, of the year 10 activities. And then there's a summative test, which I haven't put in. Um, an example from our year nine, in term one, the context is beginnings. Um, Within this, we are teaching our students to use lab equipment, about lab safety. Um, that's the first part about planning investigations and so on. The second part of the topic is um, earth science based. So we're looking at uh, volcanoes, earthquakes, plate tectonics, um, and their impact particularly on New Zealand's geography. Um, so in this particular assessment, that I'm referring to here, the students are just on a rotation, making sure that they can use the equipment as far as taking measurements. Um, and then the second activity, we give them the results of an investigation and ask them to interpret the data by writing a conclusion to the experiment. Um, and then again, a critiquing part where they look at the method that's being described and assess its validity uh, as far as providing um, reliable, reliable data. So that's the first one for the year nines. Um, this one, which looks very busy. Um, so this is the second one that is done in class. So we give them this particular table that has the latitude and longitude of earthquakes and volcanoes. We give them a world map which has um, grids on it. Um, we ask them to plot this data, as you can see. And again, this is something that has been scaffolded in class. So we teach them about latitude and longitude and we um, get them to practice identifying places um, using th those skills. Um, the what, once they've plotted it, we are, then give them a map of the Earth's tectonic plates and we ask them to interpret that in comparison with their plotting um, to describe the link between the location of earthquakes and volcanoes. And hopefully they come up with the idea that volcanoes and earthquakes occur where plates meet. Um, so that's, yeah. Now this. I've included one question out of the summative test because it leads on to something that I'm going to talk about, which sounds like Logan will as well. Um, so here's an, uh, this is a question from ARBS, um, the Assessment Resource Bank. It's a level five curriculum uh, question, but it's asking students to use the evidence provided in that representation um, to support the theory of continental drift. Uh, so students just use the key and come up with as many ideas of evidence um, that they can. Okay, so it's just some examples from a couple of our contextual topics. Now, I've been talking to some of the teachers on the current program and some on the last program, and I was surprised at the number of secondary teachers who have not come across the ARBS or the Assessment Resource Bank, so I thought I'd just mention it in here. Um, NZCER produce it. Um, they are formative assessment tasks, but as you can see, we put some in our summative tests. 
Um, there are some online assessments that you can do and what is really useful is that they are linked to um, curriculum levels and nature of science and capabilities. So if your school is into reporting on these, then um, you can use these questions and then report that a student has, you know, can work at curriculum level one, two, three, four, five, or however you do it. So I've snipped a bit off the the current setup because I wanted you to see the right hand column there, um, particularly the middle icon that shows that when you go into ARBS, they do, if you click on there, show the connection to the curriculum and also within that it has the um, nature of science aim. So if a student can successfully complete this question, which is just joining the dots and identifying where a volcano is, then you can again say that they are working at uh, curriculum level four or five and that they have made some progress towards um, using representations or communicating in science, whichever nature of science um, aim the question is at. So if you haven't used ARBS, just Google it. Um, it's free and uh, certainly is a useful tool when coming up for activities that are hands-on. Um, the other thing that some teachers have been talking about is the difficulty in finding nature of science activities. So again, I've just put in a link um, to science online and I've cut out a small section of the table to show what is available. Um, so curriculum levels one to six, uh, the table will identify which particular nature of science um, aim with, uh, that has been addressed by the question. It also gives you the contextual strand that it's coming from. And if you click on the link, it will take you to the activities and all the information that you need um, to complete the activities. So we use this um, to provide you know, hands-on activities um, that link to our context. Um, and just to, uh, I just thought I'd put in a couple of other ones that we have tried and don't necessarily use anymore. Um, this is a rubric that we used with our year nines when they were doing green and growing. Um, there are nine activities that the students could choose from. They needed to choose three um, and complete them. And there were a number of points accrued. So um, students, if they chose column one, knew that they were choosing activities that had low point value because they're reasonably uh, straightforward. Um, if they chose from column on the right hand side, then they were more complex um, activities. But within that, we've got things like taking photographs of plants around the school grounds. Um, the bottom of the middle column, they have to cook a meal for their parents using vegetables and get some feedback from there. Um, there's one about uh, rungoa Māori, so that we are trying to get children to think about um, the use of plants and traditional Māori medicine um, and so on. So we have tried that one just to give our children a bit more freedom in the type of assessment that they do so if they have a particular strength then it shows through and finally um, within the year 10 context we do one called kiwi batch where we look at um, electrical circuits so then they have to design a batch learn how to wire it up and within that context we also look at kitchen chemistry so this is an activity or part of one we get them to do at home with things that they find in their kitchen and it's based on observation mostly. So just baking soda and vinegar, recording their observations um, and trying to get them to sort of think outside the square a bit about how they could use what they've observed to unblock a, a blocked kitchen sink. So it's uh, quite an interesting one. And within this one, we also get them to make a an indicator at home and test it. Um, so that is my part of it. Thank you very much.
Joanne, that was really good. Now we're open for questions. I've got a quick question to kick off with, if you don't mind. When, yeah. I, was, when I was working at Core Education and we started working with the um, PSGF program, the ARBs were quite a new thing, and I wondered how much they had evolved because they had a certain amount of weaknesses at that time. Have they evolved since then, and are they more user-friendly than they used to be? Um, I've been using them for a few years, and um, I've found that they have been reviewed, and I certainly think they're better than they were. Um, the other thing that they've moved to is there are some online tasks as well. So with um, B BYOD in schools these days, there are activities where students can um, can use their computers to, to do some more online interesting kind of things. Um, what I like particularly about where they've gone to now is not only can I tell what curriculum level my students are working at, but I can also see what... Um, how they're meeting the nature of science goals. So, you know, are they good at interpreting um, representations? How good are they at observing that sort of thing? Um, mm -hmm. If we're going to, if we're going to have nature and science of science as a focus, then surely we need to somehow report on what our students can do within that. So that's what I like about them. So I think they've come quite a long way. Thank you. Thank you. Open now to other people. If you want to ask a question, please unmute your microphone. Is there any chance you could share some of those slides with us? Because sure, I... some of the, um, one of the things I'm really looking at doing is looking at the sort of assessment tasks for nature of science. So um, I sort of brainstorm some ideas, perhaps. Um, I could Hello. probably drop, I could drop the PowerPoint into Dropbox, if you like. Um, I'm just interested to know how time consuming this assessment style is because I love everything about it. The fact that you've really embedded it into the capabilities and you can clearly see that the kids are demonstrating those capabilities um, and you're moving away from pure content and more into thinking type tasks. But um, in terms of busy teachers, <laughs> not wanting to be lazy, of course, but how labor intensive is it? Um, can I say first, what, what we decided to do um, when we contextualised it was to remove a lot of content because what we found, we were, we were certainly treating our year 10 as a sort of dress rehearsal for year 11. And so we found that we were covering a lot of what was probably level one work in our year 10s. Um, and so, of course, we, you know, we get kids in year 11 who say, well, we've done it. So we, we took a lot of content out and we have, with the data that we've collected since that, it, it's had no impact on our very good results at level one. So we know that it's not having a negative impact. Um, well, that's interesting. Yeah. Those particular assessments, um, some of them, well, I guess marking's marking, but um, there are really only three big assessments that we mark for within each term. Um, individual teachers will... Um, you know, mark other stuff or, or, or look at assessing their students uh, as they walk around the rooms and so on. I haven't found it any more time consuming than um, any other year that I've taught before we tried this, to be honest. The, the thing that we, tr we need to work towards that we're looking at, and when I go back, we'll be looking at is, is reporting. How do we report on it? Mm. Yeah, that's so Great. Well, I mean, we, I think we over assess at McCain's College and we're very content driven and we find exactly the same problem as you that um, we're just teaching the same content over again in year 11, but we're still having to drum home the skills because for some reason they just don't seem to be getting the skills and attitudes we want them to have. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm hoping that as we get our nature and sci of science more and more embedded in the junior program, we'll reap the benefits in the seniors. Yeah, I think we have an advantage in that we're a year, year 7 to 13 school. And so and what I didn't talk about today um, was how we, we're introducing this in our year 7s and 8s. So by the time we get them in year 9, um, they're probably a little bit stronger than, not, than if they came to us from a separate school. But if you're going to be working with your intermediate or contributing school, you may be able to see a, a change in the, the abilities or the skills of the students coming through to you. 
Absolutely, and that's what we're hoping to achieve is some good synergy. Well, thank you very much, Joanne. That was uh, very informative. Um, it's good to see that we're actually doing a lot of similar stuff as to what um, is happening at Aquinas College. So I'll share a little bit about what we've been up to. Um, and yeah, hopefully it um, follows on from what Joanne said. Um, yeah, mine's titled Bring the, the Nature of Science to Life, and it's all about the journey that um, we've been on at Albany Junior High School. Um, and to give you a little bit of background, um, we are a, a school that's a, a future-focused school in Albany that caters for year seven to 10 students. Um, we were opened in 2005, and Helen Clark described the school as a model for future middle-level schooling in the country. Um, and most students follow the Albany school pathway, so we've got um, five feeder primary schools and then most students move on to Albany Senior High School for years 11 to 13. So we're essentially preparing them to, to go and to do NCA at, um, at year 11. Our current role is uh, 1,109 students and we have um, a mixture of both primary and secondary trained teachers. So as you can probably imagine, that does uh, you know, give, give us a few, a few issues to work through and a few difficulties in, in that sense. But, um, we have students that learn from um, specialist subject teachers for their core subjects. Um, just to quickly go through what you know, who we are and what we've what we've been up to. Um, we've only got a, uh, seven staff in our science faculty, um, so we're very a very supportive and cohesive um, science faculty. Um, every student at AJHS learns science from um, a specialist teacher, except in year seven where they're taught by their homeroom teacher and. They go through different topics such as chemistry and water and classification um, in, in their year seven year. Um, and yeah, one of our big points of difference from uh, a kind of traditional intermediate school would be that, that um, emphasis on science from year seven and, and especially year eight too, where they have a specialist science teacher. Um, quick background, um, my, the, the whole of John Cluett um, did the SCLP in 20, sorry, 2015. Um, he was studying at Auckland Uni doing um, lasers in the optic department, department. and I was uh, at the SLP in the end of 2015 and I went to Massey University doing ecology. Now there's a few things that have changed since John and I went on the SCLP and I'm going to talk about these in, in this presentation. Um, the first thing, like Joanne mentioned, is that we have changed our assessments to focus specifically on the nature of science. Uh, we now have a much stronger NOS and capability focus in all our science learning at AJHS. And we've always done lots of practicals, but now we're doing even more as a result. And we're developing the use of more student investigations in our curriculum. And we've also got uh, much stronger community links between other schools, universities, and local organisations. And I'll talk a bit more about that a bit later on. Um, so like Joanne talked about, we've actually, um, we've kind of, disbanded the idea of giving a kind of end of topic test. We found a lot of students were getting, getting quite kind of stressed out by, by having to study for that and having a whole hour to do a test. So now we go down to three or four assessments each, each topic, which are actually based on the ARBs. So we kind of um, either use the ARBs as they are or modify them to suit our needs at Albany Junior. Um, and these are lower stakes and they cause less stress for the, for the students and the teachers. Um, and we're kind of finding now that the attitude of the students is, is more like they're not so not so worried about tests now and they kind of it becomes more more part of their learning um, and we're actually using those to, to give feedback to students and, and to be able to um, take them on that learning journey. So we have assessments that focus on understanding, investigating, communicating and participating and contributing and when we go through and do our reporting we actually report on those four aspects in our in came on, on our school reports. Now, here's an example of uh, an ARB that we have used quite recently, and it, it's worked very well for us. And what I really like about this one is, um, I think Joe Joanne did mention this before about the vinegar and baking soda, but we um, I kind of like we like the layout of this. It's quite simple, and it focuses quite heavily on the um, first capabilities, so the idea of um, making observations and then using those to make inferences about what's actually going on there. So um, yeah, we found this one quite successful. It, it is focused on level three and four. Um, of the New Zealand curriculum and yeah it does it does cater quite well for that and obviously there is also a, a hands-on part practical part that goes along with this which the kids really enjoy too and uh, here's all the curriculum info about this so as you can see there on the screen it is um, obviously like I said an investigation part 
and the capability focus it says is brought on by the conversations that you have and the questions that you ask. So I found when we did this, it actually led, led, led to a lot of really good discussions and the students were really um, really engaged and they, they kind of came back and um, had a whole lot of questions and I gave them the challenge to go home tonight and, and to go home that night and do the same experiment with their, with their family and just kind of explain what was actually going on. So it was bringing that whole idea of taking, taking their learning home with them and um, sharing with their families. Uh, and just to give you a bit of an indication about our reporting system, uh, you can see here we do have, uh, this is year eight energy from, from last year, and we've got the, the four kind of um, key nature of science strands. There's a participation, investigation, communication, understanding for energy. So basically in each term we'll, we'll kind of focus on those four activities. Uh, participation was more of an overall teacher judgment on, on how that student had been participating in class that, that term. Investigation would be more of a hands-on type activity. It might have been an electricity investigation or a chemical investigation. Excuse me. And um, communication was usually a a writing type activity where they would communicate their ideas. But I, I have done some recently where they've actually been making uh, stop motion videos and using that to communicate their understanding. And understanding is, is like it says, just looking at the understanding of what they've actually picked up from from their learning. And we do um, we do mark based on the school on the New Zealand uh, leveling system. So we've got marks that range from uh, basically from two A to about six A in, in our classes, and, and that shows my uh, year ten class from this year. Uh, here's a, a video like I talked about before of a stop motion video, and this is um, just one way for the students to show to communicate their the ideas and the understanding. So I'll see if this will play. It doesn't have any sounds, it should be okay. Yeah, so we did this for um, our first unit of chemistry, and this was just a way for them to, to kind of show what they, were, what they were learning in class and be able to communicate their idea with other people. They really enjoyed doing this. It was a really cool way for them to, to kind of step away from the traditional kind of um, writing a test or writing down an essay and actually just uh, going and doing this and they, they really enjoyed and got a lot out of this and um, yeah, I think I'll definitely do this this again next year too. Uh, we do have a quite a heavy literacy focus at our school um, and I do want to talk about that in, in the sense of that does, you know, at times it does form our communication um, assessments are sometimes based on, on our writing and I'll quickly just go through, and this might help some people out with, with um, literacy, especially for um, intermediates or primaries. Um, and we, we use two initiatives um, called PEEL and CSP, and I'll, I'll talk a bit about, about PEEL. So um, PEEL is just a way for students to be able to bring their ideas together and to write a you know, reasonably um, cohesive essay. And it's something that we do find our year sevens and eights do struggle with, so it's, it's, it has been a school-wide focus for us. So PEEL stands for, as you can see there, um, point, explain, evidence, and link. And we use that across the whole school and students come in aware of this and they're then able to um, you know, transfer this to their science as well. And just to show you an example of what this looks like, um, this is an, ex uh, an example of one girl and on the uh, left-hand side you can see her, her writing from the first term this year. Uh, she's definitely not confident and she um, has only written a sentence there. And then through teacher feedback and through the use of appeal and just being, yeah, just, just kind of gaining that confidence, um, she's, she's now moved up to a 6P. So I think she started off on, on kind of a, a high level 4 and she's moved up to a 6P with her writing. So you can see how she's kind of annotated it there. She's got the, um, on the right hand side, she's got the, the appeal on the side there. She's got the, um, the point at the start, the evidence that she's got, she's explaining it and she's linking it to, to real life. So she's um, you made a lot of really good really good changes there and, and that that's works well for all of our students. We um, yeah we really do really do a good lot out of out of using peel with them. Uh, quickly I'm going to go through a few things on what we've been doing with year seven science. Um, so our topic for term three is chemistry and we've got uh, lots of hands-on learning experiences for the students. Um, one of my jobs is to work with the Year 7 team. Like I said before, the Year 7 teachers, they don't, a lot of them are, are primary school trained, so they don't have a, a science background. And um, one of the 
focuses for next term with chemistry is actually looking at the capability one, so it's gathering data and then um, looking at the observations that the students are making then from that, deducing the inferences from that. And yeah, like I said, we, um, we, we're trying to get them ready for year eight, so when they come into our classrooms, we, um, they have a really good understanding of NOS and the capabilities, which is working really well for us at the moment. Another thing I think Joanne did mention before is um, what's been really powerful for us is the idea of home learning. So we've had really, some really cool things happening this year. Um, my year seven class, we've done, we've done a lot of experiments and uh, a lot of them go home and I just say to them, hey, you know, go home, show mum and dad what you've been up to and, um, and then you know, go, and, go and explain to them the science behind that. And they've been sending me in photos and, and their parents have been coming and talking to me about what's been going on at home. It's, it's just really, yeah, really cool. Uh, again, connecting with the families, we had a year seven conference and um, my class decided to do a, a kind of like a science fair for their parents. So they managed to talk to a whole lot of parents, like their own parents and other parents too, that came in for those conferences. And again, another really powerful learning experience and it kind of built on that, that home learning idea that we've been trying to push at school. Uh, Google Classroom, I won't talk too much about that. It's just um, one of the things that we are using. I'm sure a lot of schools are now getting into that. Um, but it is a way for us to make our learning really visible um, and post a lot of things that we're doing in class and it's just a way for both the students and the, and the families to kind of track what we're, where their learning's going. And um, yeah, another cool thing about Google Classroom is that we, we can have lots of questions can be posted and discussions can kind of go on on that, on that platform um, and that gives the students the control and the ownership of their learning. And it does kind of, yeah, we are incorporating all those aspects of NOS in there. So we've got the understanding being shown there. We've got the investigations that are going on there. And, um, yeah, through discussion and, and um, questions and things, they are participating and contributing. Uh, a few other things. I won't quickly, oh, I'll quickly run through. We, I have mentioned we have an animal club. And um, there's a few photos here of our animals. So um, we've got, uh, at the moment, six bunny rabbits, one turtle. I think we're on about 20 birds uh, and four chickens. Um, and this is a really, really, um, yeah, really big point of difference for Albany Junior High School, and it, it, it promotes so many um, aspects of nature of science. You know, we've we've got a, um, a group of about thirty students from about year seven to year ten who are just really enjoying participating and contributing in that in that aspect, and they're learning valuable skills. Uh, it's quite often students that wouldn't really fit in socially, so they're learning to um, to make friends with the animals and also with other people that like animals too. Um, and some other cool things that have been happening. Um, we've had a rocket challenge that we did last year um, with Massey Uni and Aerospace Education. Uh, we get a lot of people coming into our school to, to talk. We've um, had one lady called Bromwyn, who's a, a parent and a researcher, um, actually a neuroscientist, and she brought in a whole lot of brain samples. You can see the, um, the, the students using there. And um, they've been to visit her at her workplace at the Liggins Institute over in, um, in Grafton. In Auckland. Um, and what else? Uh, we've, yeah, one of the projects I've been heavily involved in this year is the Monarch Butterfly Project. Um, it's a citizen science project, and you might have, you, I mean, other schools are probably doing this too. We've um, been going around our school and planting swan plants and then tagging butterflies. And you can see the picture on the right hand side there is a, um, a butterfly getting a, a small sticker put on its wing. Um, I have put on a link on here um, for the website. If you'd like to get involved, um, yeah, it's definitely, definitely worth it. And um, my class has actually written a, an article that has appeared in the Monarch, Butter, oh, sorry, the, the Moth and Butterfly New Zealand Trust uh, magazine for this, for this uh, season. So, yeah, and that's, um, that's pretty much my talk. Um, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure I probably, probably could go into a bit more on the um, the ARBs here, but I'm happy to answer any questions about any anything that anyone may have. Thanks, Logan. That was great. I particularly liked the stop motion video. It was really great. Being a chemist myself. <laughs> uh, anyway, I'd like to throw this open. Um, questions for Logan, please. Hi, Logan. Oh, I've got a question. Yeah. Um, when, when you say you do three or four assessments per topic, are you, are you just using those sort of individual ARB um, assessments 
or are you doing big, long, hour-long kind of assessments? No, no. Um, so, so most most ARBs are usually they usually spend maybe five to ten minutes on on the ARBs that we're using. Um, oh, yeah. Not, so you're just using those. Yeah, we're just using those, and uh, and like a lot of them, we can kind of just fit in maybe at the end of a lesson or at the start of a lesson, and it's really. Like I said before, it kind of takes the stress off the students. They don't feel quite so nervous about having a test, you know, and it's kind of, it becomes part of their learning really because they kind of walk in and go, oh, you know, you're doing this today. And it doesn't really, it doesn't really affect them the same way that a big test used to. But we see the same results in the way that we're looking at um, the four capabilities. The participating is normally an overall teacher judgment. So we say, you know, how has that student been in class this term? Have they been engaged? Have they been getting involved in the experiments and the, and the discussions and things? So that's more a teacher judgment, but the understanding, investigating, and the communicating are usually our base assessments for us, yeah. Right, yep, thank you. And oh, can, can I just add to that? We, 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 have, we have had a lot of discussion about the, the marking of the ARBs, and we have found that we have felt that some are probably a little bit too easy in terms of the marking schedule. So we have had discussions regarding what mark would you give to some kind of moderation type meetings when we do those ARBs? So, and again, it, it is a tr- kind of trial and error thing. Like there's a lot that are online at the moment and there's still, there's still problems with the online ones. Like my class did one and it got sent back to me in an electronic form and I, I couldn't actually read what all the answers were. So that, that didn't work out for us, but yeah, we're just, we're just trying these things and seeing how they go. Logan, I have a question. Um, Looking at that KMA um, result sheet that you put up with the, you know, 4A, 5B, etc., is that's the ASTL, um, ASTL way of recording things? Am I right? Uh, so 6P, 6 proficient or 5 yes, advanced? Yes, it is. Yeah, yeah. So how do, um, how do, you, how do you decide um, whether they're an advanced or proficient using um, ARBs? That's a really good question. I was, I was hoping nobody would ask that, but um, <laughs> Sorry, no, it, it, we have been, like our whole school has been in a lot of discussion about the idea of overall teacher judgment. And what we do is, is as we are quite a small faculty with science, we kind of just sit down and say, hey, I've marked this, I give it, well, I might say, hey, I've marked this, what would you give it before I even tell you what, you know? So I get someone else's feedback and then I kind of see if, if I'm on the right track. And I mean, it, it, is a, it has been a really big learning curve for us. And I think we're kind of gradually getting more of an understanding of, of that basic professional advance um, sub-leveling. Okay, thank you. What, how, how, do you, how do you mark yours, Joanne? No, well, see, that's, that's where we're sort of still working towards that because we report using the WNAME system. So we have, you know, not achieved working towards achievement and so on. And so the assessments are marked uh, basically with a, a point system and then the three assessments are added together. And if your three assessments added together come up as 80% or more, then you get an excellence. Yeah. So uh, because our school doesn't require us at this stage to report against curriculum levels, we haven't. Um, okay. But certainly I'm looking at maybe trying to report a bit more on um, the nature of science capabilities side so we can look at that. Yeah. yeah. So, Joanne, can I just ask you a question? Yes. Um, so, when you say you mark your assessments and they might get sort of 80%, in, but then you're assigning them an NAME grade, mm. are you within that also looking at the depth of their answers and the, um, you know, the describing and explaining and, and that kind of... Yeah, so um, if it, yeah, so, so within each activity, we have a gradation of difficulty. So um, some of the, if you're, if you're just doing a describe type question, a list to draw or something like that, then it's only going to be worth a couple of marks. If we're asking them to write a paragraph, uh, for example, there's one where we ask them to compare, the, well, compare asexual and sexual reproduction, for example then there would be um, more mark. well, a student could gain more marks by having a more comprehensive answer. Um, so I get the students who answer 
the harder questions and do them well will end up with more points. And so when you add them all up, then they're more likely to get an E. Do you get students who that only answer a few, answer them well, but don't get enough points? Oh, absolutely. I um, mean, and, and because because uh, that's where feedback and feed forward comes in, and it's also where we do the scaffolding within the within the class. So, you know, somewhere in the teaching of the topic, we will have taught them how to write a comparison um, and scaffold it that way. So, if they can make five comparisons, then they you know they may get five marks. Whereas if they only make one comparison, they'll they'll get one. I mean, it's it's certainly not the best system. But at the moment, because we're not reporting on curriculum level or nature of science capabilities, um, it's a way to balance out the marks so that the students who are very good at reading and writing for tests don't always get the top marks. You know, a student who yeah. a student who does well in a variety of activities can, you know, make their strengths balance out their weaknesses. I've got a question for Logan. Hi. I'm interested in how you, um, what sort of lines in the sand you draw in terms of skills and content as the kids progress from year seven, eight, and then through to nine and 10. And I know that there's the, the New Zealand curriculum, which gives those kind of overlapping bands, but how do you and your school decide on that? We did have, a bit more of a context um, focus last year, um, and when I came back from the SCLP, that was kind of one of our one of our areas that we looked at. And we're now trying to, we're basically taking out a lot of like Joanne said, taking out a lot of content, and we're now kind of more pushing it, looking looking at those skills, those capability you know, focuses. Um, so I think I think for us, we we have, I mean, we're just trying to get the students ready um, for year eleven. So we kind we 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 kind of cover you kind of basic physics, chemistry, and bio every every year, but it's more of a context type focus for us now with those capabilities in place. Okay, that, so sort of at that borderline between the year eights and the year nines, have you got a kind of fluid um, program where, that you're building on, or do you have a do you have a much greater focus on skills in year eight and then content in year nine? Yeah, I mean like. Like all year levels, we do we do have you know a, especially year seven and eight. There's yeah, probably there's more of a skills focus in there. Um, but I mean, we are finding because our students have got um, quite a big exposure to science at year seven, they're actually coming in with with some really good science knowledge too. So what I'm what I'm finding at Albany Junior is because I taught at Western Springs College for a while too, and what I'm teaching my year sevens and eights would be typically what I would be teaching year nines and tens at at a, at a high school or a college. Wow. So I think we're, you know, I think we're actually setting the bar pretty high in terms of our student achievement, but we're also giving them lots of experiences with science, and that's actually getting them a lot more engaged and a lot more involved in science too. And so are you able to teach in a less pressured way where you've got a bit more time for the concepts? Because I know for us at year nine and 10, we gallop through the program, we never really have time to do the lovely um, inquiry type learning that we'd like to do. That does happen at times, and we, there is always pressure, um, especially when there's kind of assessments that are due to be put into, into reports and things. But, I mean, I think it is a bit more flexible than, than being at a college. Um, and and we, we, do have, we do a lot of focus on, on student, student voice. So I'll say to my, my students, hey, you know, what are you interested in? And we'll kind of, I mean, I'll, there'll be, a, there'll be a, a unit plan that I'll follow, but there is a, a bit of room for flexibility. And we've we're trying to bring that more into our into our classes, you know, giving more room for for that freedom and, and basically that student interest as well. Oh, that's great. And I liked what you said about rather having smaller, low, lower stakes assessments. Yeah. Because one of the things that is emerging in our school is um, huge levels of stress. Yeah. And historically the year nines and tens you know it was kind of like we're the babies in the secondary school and we don't take things too seriously but we're starting to get year nines getting very anxious about their exams which yeah. to me seems sad i mean obviously you want to lift the bar high and you want them to do their best but not to the extent that they're starting to have to go on antidepressive <laughs> yeah we, we had that same issue at our school um, last year like with the end of year exams we actually had to stop giving year nines the exams because um, some of them were getting so anxious 
just by the thought of an exam that um, you know we were getting lots of, of kids on you know like so on antidepressants and lots of sick kids just from just from yeah. that, that stress. So um, yeah, I mean we did we, we are sort of exams for year tens, but even those are we've made them lower stakes than they used to be. Um, but that, that's I'm, I'm only speaking for science. I know other faculties are still really really heavy on their exams. So. Um, mm. I mean, but but I mean, our goal is just to get the, the, the students involved in science and get them engaged, and then hopefully they'll be able to carry what they've learned at, at our school on to um, senior college. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, research proves that you retain things much better when you kind of learn them in in a pleasant atmosphere than yeah. rather than under pressure. So that's good. Thanks. Um, but Susan, I'm, I'm more than happy if you want me to to share any any unit plans or anything with you. Um, I'm more than happy to carry on the conversation if you want. Okay, thanks a lot. I might get in touch with you. It's particularly in the light of my new role, where I'll be able to be working with our um, intermediate school more closely to try and align our science programs. Oh, are, um, you, are, are you part of the community of learning? Are you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, me, um, me too. We, me too. We, we have a learning change network, okay. Um, but it's also an initiative between the two schools themselves. Oh, cool! Yeah. And um, it's more—it's been instigated by our school, which is a really very academic school, wanting to try and raise the level of science in the year nines coming to us from from the intermediate feeder school. And to some extent, it's kind of viewed as interfering because they do international baccalaureates. They teach very much embedded in context and depends on the, on the, the teachers. Okay. If the teachers like science, then they include quite a lot of science content if they don't feel confident that they don't. And so really it's more to address to try and make things a bit more uniform. Um, but yeah. also to encourage teachers rather than tread on their toes and make them feel intimidated. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm more than happy to share what we're doing with our year sevens because that might help you out with the intermediate school. And, and oh, like that I, would be brilliant. Like I said in the PowerPoint, like we, we've got a lot of year seven teachers who, who are primary trained and they're not, they're not science specialists by, by any means. And um, a lot of them do really struggle with, um, with the science. So I guess my job is, is kind of overseeing their program is, is to make sure that they're um, that they've got a science curriculum they can deliver that they feel confident in, in delivering. So it's, it's not too, it's not too hard for them. But um, and it, it, like I said, it's focused on those getting those skills and capabilities across, which I mean are quite easy to understand for, for any teacher, I think. So um, yeah, we've made some quite good progress on that. So I'm happy to share anything, any, anything like that with you if you want. Fabulous. Thanks, Logan. I appreciate that. And listening to you and to Joanne. Um, one of our focuses every year is literacy, um, scientific and general literacy. And, you know, when I look at the sort of work you're doing, and Joanne was talking about comparing and contrasting and things like that, you know, it's just beautiful the way nature science enhances literacy, you know, by default. Yeah, it, it, it definitely does, yeah. Unless there's any more questions or any more comments, um, I will... Um, call it a day. Good night. Have a peaceful night and keep warm.